it's critical that you cover what goes on before Donald Trump takes the stage at his rally because they follow the same pattern. Donald Trump posts some ridiculous, hateful stuff on his social media platform, and then they have these speakers before Donald Trump spread the most heinous lies and precondition the audience to the hate and lies and venom that Donald Trump is about to spew. It's carefully choreographed. So take a look at this, for example. So before Donald Trump gets gives that hate-filled, venomous, Nazi-like speech in Aurora, Colorado, he posts this AI image, open border equals packed classrooms. Now, this is 100% AI. If you actually look at the photo that he posted, these aren't humans, like take a look at these faces, take a look at these photos, I'm swiping through them right now. Then Donald Trump posts this where the racism is just right out in the open. Your new apartment managers, if Kamala's re-elected, and one of the big lies that Donald Trump is spreading is that gang members have taken over all of Colorado and Aurora and Denver, and he's going to liberate it all, and he's going to stop the invasion. And what he talks about is, and he uses the term invasion because that's a word in the Aliens and Sedition Act of 1798, which would give wartime dictatorial powers to an executive, and the Supreme Court's already given him absolute immunity. So he uses this imagery to assert what he would assert, dictatorial authoritarian, Hitler-like control, do mass deportations, and what the Alien and Sedition Act of 1798 would also allow him to do is to lock up people who criticize him, add the immunity uh, ruling to that, and he will rule like Saddam Hussein. So here's what he posted before the event. Then you have this uh, family that speaks, and they just lie. Some mom goes up on stage, and they're like, and she makes her talk about grooming. She makes her kids say this stuff also, that people are dressing up like kittens and pooping on the floor, and that all, and that liberals and non conservatives, they're dressing up like cats and, and the transgender problem is in their face and it can't be stopped. This is right before Donald Trump takes the stage. Play this clip. We are not kidding you. This is a real problem. This is not something that the media is making up. This is something that my children experience every single day. Every single day they have to experience transgenders at their school. They have to experience people that think that they're bunny rabbits, kitty cats, dogs. They get meowed at, they get barked at. Kids scratch me on the back because they identify as a cat. It's horrible. <laughs> and our governor thinks it's imaginary. And while Vice President Kamala Harris and Governor Walls talk about bringing joy, here's one of these speakers who talks about like taking down Denver and, and just Look at this kind of hate-filled speech. Here, play this clip. Of dollars, the millions of dollars, your dollars, that were funneled to these nonprofits to place these people into my city. They came through Denver, and let me tell you something else. Denver had better start to keep to themselves. The time of Denver controlling the entire state, these days are over. They are over. Then you have Lauren Boebert take the stage who talks about defunding the federal government. Listen to this. Back. President Trump is here to defund the weaponized federal agencies. I am here to stand strong for you and our Colorado needs to be your voice. We then Stephen Miller has a photo up of uh, Hispanic people. Um, and then he starts looking at it, points at the photos, and then gets the people to start booing the photos. Play this clip. Look at all these photos around me. Are these the kids you grew up with? Are these the neighbors you were raised with? Are these the neighbors that you want in your city? No. These are the criminal migrants that Kamala Harris brought into your community. And as swiftly as they came, Donald Trump will send them back.
And one of the things that the Alien and Sedition Act, which Trump talks about, I'll just show you that clip in a little bit, that Trump talks about um, implementing allows you to do is allows discrimination on the basis of ancestry. So if you're first or second generation and you go, well, I have my papers, he's not coming for me. Yeah, he is. He is, because he's going to say, as he does with Haitian migrants, that their status is actually not legal, even though their status is legal. So if you look a certain way, all he's going to do is say, well, your genes, remember he talks about genes a lot, which the New York Times reports as, oh, Donald Trump, he's fascinated with genes. No, he's talking about eugenics, like Adolf Hitler is. And he's going to do it on the basis of if you have immigrant genes, he's coming for you. On day one, they will be knocking on your door. Even if you're a white Christian, he'll say, well, you're an immigrant. Remember they were talking about, so, you know, about, you know, people, well, and J.D. Vance was saying this, German immigrants, Italian immigrants. So if you think you're immune because your skin color is whiter, you're not. And if you're first generation, second generation immigrant, you go, well, that's not me. I have my papers. That's not Trump's plan. They're... Remember the adage, first they came for this group, then they came for that group, then they came for me and I didn't speak up. Okay, here by the way is after Stephen Miller, we played the Stephen Miller clip. So after Stephen Miller, here we have the right side broadcasting host right here, just straight up lying about Haitian migrants eating pets. Play this clip. Springfield, Ohio with the migrant crisis of Haitians who are eating pets who are murdering pets, causing havoc throughout the country. And that's why we fight, fight, fight. This is the North Korea style propaganda network. Here he is again saying, these people, they're just so evil. They're they're raping women and men and underage children. They're sp here he is spreading kind of QAnon stuff right here. Play this clip. Playing two mug shots of two of the most heinous TDA Venezuelan gang members. And these people, they are so evil. They are not your run of the mill criminal. They are people that are satanic. They are involved in human sacrifice. They are raping men, women, and children, especially underage children. The sex trafficking, the, the labor trafficking happening must come to an end. We know this. Now, take a look at what Donald Trump said during his speech, where he says that the legal, this is where I work, he says the legal migrants, they're legal. They're not here unlawfully in um, Springfield, Ohio. He says that they're coming here from prisons and he goes, they're not legal. Listen to this here, play this clip. On day one of this Trump administration, you know, if you take a look at Springfield, Ohio, how about that? They have, they have about 50,000 people, no crime, beautiful community, everything nice, schools, everything nice. They dropped in 32,000 people that are really illegal. You know, they did it in such a way that they could make the case. You know, They said they did it through probation. <laughs> What's probation? They took them in. They took them in through probation. So I assume they assume they're like prisoners or something. And therefore, they're legal. They brought in 32,000 people into a community of 50, a community. And J.D. Vance today said that he wouldn't be the second most powerful person of Trump won. He said the attorney general would be why, because they're going to weaponize it and start rounding people up and arresting them and putting them into camps. He's saying he's doing it. They're saying they're doing it. Here's what J.D. Vance has to say. Play the clip. The person in government after the president, it's not me. And it's not even, you know, it's not the staff members. The most important person in government, I think, after the president for this cycle is going to be the attorney general, sir. Uh, because we really do have to clean house the broken leadership of the Department of Justice. It's got to work for equal justice under law. And we need a strong, smart, courageous attorney general. And that's one of the things I help out on the transition, obviously. We're thinking about, you know, I'm a very superstitious guy, so I don't like to think that much about what happens after we win. I'm focused on winning, but you've got to do a little bit of that work beforehand. The most important thing, we're in an attorney general who serves the people. And that's one of the best arguments to elect Donald J. Trump. Thank you, sir. Thank you for your On the other hand, here is what Governor Walls had to say as a governor during COVID. Play this clip. Let's go back to your uh, event at the VFW. Yeah. Uh, you talked about Putin. 
you were getting pretty upset about Putin and the the news about uh, about his relationship with Trump. What do you? Where do you see the problem there? Yeah, and that was that was John McCain, VFW Hall with Jim McCain, and of course Ruben Gallego. Uh, look, the issue here is is that the folks who serve in that hall, it's pretty clear that Vladimir Putin's not with us, and this revelation that came out about Bob Woodward's book that that there's a relationship here, up to seven calls working amongst them. And I said the thing that got me really fired up on this is as governor during COVID. Um, trying to protect our citizens. One of the things was getting some of this testing equipment early on was virtually impossible. And in some cases it was sort of life and death situations. And then to hear that uh, that Donald Trump was giving that to Vladimir Putin when the states couldn't get it, um, that, that's just not how they're supposed to work. And, and this continued relationship with autocrats is, is really, really troubling. Let's just go farther. What should that mean to voters? Well, I think it means you need to have a steady person who has the commander in chief, Kamala Harris, being able to build with our allies. Look, our allies don't trust Donald Trump. They've said that. The, the, the dictators want to saddle up to him because he's an easy mark. And folks like John Kelly, his chief of staff, a four star decorated general, said that he shouldn't be anywhere near the White House. He's a flawed human being. So I think you're talking about character. You're talking about national security. And that VFW hall and the work we've done, that's nonpartisan work. That Those are Democrats and Republicans in there. But this issue, whether it's John McCain, Ronald Reagan, Eisenhower, this is not. The Republican Party would not be saddling up to Vladimir Putin, and I think it's a, it, it's a big concern. It's coming out at this point in time, which I'm glad it is. And uh, again, as I said, as governors, um, it's just unconscionable that we were not getting this equipment Vladimir Putin was. And finally, listen to what J.D. Vance said during his interview with the New York Times that came out on Friday. Play the clip. In the debate, you were asked to clarify if you believe Trump lost the 2020 election. Do you believe he lost the 2020 election? I think that Donald Trump and I have both raised a number of issues with the 2020 election, but we're focused on the future. I think there's an obsession here with focusing on 2020. I'm much more worried about what happened after 2020, which is a wide open border, groceries that are unaffordable. And look- Senator, yes or no? Okay. Did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Well, let me ask you a question. Is it okay that big technology companies censored the Hunter Biden laptop story, which independent analysis have said cost Donald Trump millions of votes. Senator Vance, I'm going to ask you again, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? Did big technology companies censor a story that independent studies have suggested would have cost Trump millions of votes? Senator I think that's Vance, the question. I'm going to ask you again, did Donald Trump lose the 2020 election? And I've answered election? your question with another question. You answer my question and I'll answer yours. I have asked this question repeatedly. It is something that is very important for the American people to know. There is no proof, legal or otherwise, that Donald Trump did not lose the 2020 you're, election. You're repeating a slogan rather than engaging with what I'm saying, which is that when our own technology firms engage in industrial scale censorship, by the way, backed up by the federal government in a way that independent studies suggest affect the votes, I'm worried about Americans who feel like there were problems in 2020. I'm not worried about this slogan that people throw. Well, every court case went this way. I'm talking about something very discreet, a problem of censorship in this country that I do think affected things in 2020, and more importantly, that led to Kamala Harris's governance, which has screwed this country up in a big way. Senator, would you have certified the election in 2020? Yes or no? I've said that I would have voted against certification because of the concern that I just raised. I think that when you have technology companies- The answer is no. When you have technology companies censoring Americans at a mass scale in a way that, again, independent studies have suggested affect the vote, I think that it's right to protest against that, to criticize that, and that's a totally reasonable thing. So the answer is no. Well, there you have it. Take a look at all that. Put all the pieces together. Hit subscribe. This is important. Make sure you're registered to vote. Make sure your family's registered to vote. Spend this weekend doing that. That's how you can help right now, okay? Hit subscribe. Let's get to 4 million together. Love this video? Make sure you stay up to date on the latest breaking news and all things Midas by signing up to the Midas Touch newsletter at MidasTouch.com newsletter.